Ladies and gentlemen, I'm welcoming you to our webinar of basics principles of Anchor. We will start right now in our webinar, but before that, let me give you a small introduction about myself. So this is Mohammed Bakr from the field technical team from Saudi Arabia, almost three years experience in the technical field related to the fixation and support system. I'm specialized in designing the mechanical and chemical anchors, the installation systems for pipes and MEV services, and also to give the trainings for anchors in installation system and also for fire stop materials. I am from a civil engineering background, graduated from King Power University of Petroleum and Minerals. I've also went through different of external certification that helped me to enhance my career, having small hobbies of playing, watching football and read and writing the poetry also. So what will be the webinar outline for us in the basics principle of Anchor? It will be related to understanding the factors and the important influences for to choose the anchoring system. On which basis we are choosing our anchor, we will understand this. We will understand also what is the mechanism of the fixing system or how the anchor is going to be attached to your substrate whether a concrete wall or a hollow core slab or a gypsum board wall, we will understand all of that. Also, we are going to differentiate between the different base materials. What will differentiate, what will make the difference between the concrete and the solid block or the hollow block or for the plaster boards, for example. So, and the core of our webinar of today is to discuss or to understand what are the different solutions of anchors and for different types of substrates. So what is the suitable anchor for that suitable type of uh, substrate? And for sure, we are going to discuss the main advantage and what is the application that you can use this anchor for in your construction site, as we are going to see in the upcoming slides. So we will start firstly with the first point, which is the parameters or factors of selection of the post installed anchors. If anybody give, can give me uh, like a small information or like what's his, his mind, what do you think we are choosing the anchor according to what? Or what are the parameters on which we are using the anchor? Like what, what how, why we are choosing such anchor for such uh, uh, different base, base material, for example? If anybody can give me an answer, it would be much appreciated from you before we can go ahead and start. So Mr. Ahmed is telling us according to the base material and the different forces, this is for sure. He already hit two points of the six we're going to talk about. Mr. Muhammad also is saying according to the load, this is absolutely correct. So basically these are the main two points that we're going to discuss. Uh, how we are choosing the anchor according to. Thanks to Mr. Muhammad and Mr. Uh, Ahmed Jalabi. Mr. Uh, Madhavani is saying to overcome tensile and lateral forces. This is absolutely correct. So thank you for your answers. We will go through this by one, one by one. So for sure, basically it will be starting by the building material. So basically, and this is the main principle, according to the main building material, whether it's concrete, hollow block, solid block, radiated concrete, this is we are going to discuss now what are the main building material uh, we are going to have, and accordingly, we are choosing our anchor. So this is our first parameter. The second parameter, it will be for sure the drilling technique. Uh, because at our site, whether, whether we are going to use the hammer or normal drill, or the diamond coring drill, this will also affect our choosing of our anchors and our anchor depth or, an, or our anchor installation a technique. So the type of drilling, whether it's hammer drill, core drill, or even hollow drilling, this will also affect our way of installation and also will affect our choosing uh, methodology. And then the installation type itself, whether we are going to push through where the base plate is there and going to push through the anchor uh, at, or we are going to place the anchor first before installing the base plate, or sometimes we are going to have the base plate which is not touching our substrate, that it will be away 
from the concrete wall or the concrete slab, this also for sure we are going to influence or affect our choosing methodology for the anchor that we are going to use to install. And one of the most important things, which is the load type and direction, whether we are going to have a tension load or a shear load or a kind of oblique load, which is a kind of inclined load that will give us tension and shear as a resultant, this is also will affect the, the type of the anchor we are going to choose and the anchorage depth of that anchor. Also, whether if this load is a static load or a dynamic load where we are going to have a different types of load cycles, this is also will affect because the anchors that is suitable for the static load will not be, uh, sometimes it will not be suitable for the dynamic load. So for the dy dynamic load, for example, we need to have a specific anchor that it will take these kind of different load cycles per specific period of time. And finally, we have to see how this anchor is attached to the base plate or how is this anchor going to be attached to our substrate or what is the mechanism? So basically these are the five points, the five main points that it will influence our selection for the anchor. However, in order to, to be going to the important uh, techniques and important uh, points, we are going to discuss about two main criteria, which is for sure the building material and the working principles or the mechanism. But let us start for the mechanism of the loads, firstly. So it will give us the, the, the clue about how the anchor is working. So for the working principles, we are having three types of principles of, or mechanism. So friction due to the expansion, and this is, will be basically at, happening to all of our expansion anchors. So after you applying the hammering and applying the torque, so the anchor itself by somehow, it will going to press into the concrete in which, it will give us stresses. If you can see these perpendicular arrows, it will show us the stresses that, that it will help of the transfer of the load between the fault and the substrate, which will be mostly concrete. So expansion, that it will give us a friction load between the concrete and the anchor itself. So we have to make sure for such type of mechanism that we are uh, making the enough torque in order to give us the enough friction that it will hold the load. Also, it's good to say that the maximum amount of stress, it will be according to that type of fixation or that type of mechanism. So this is the first one, friction due to expansion. The second one, it will be the mechanical undercut or sometimes we call it mechanical interlock because it will make a kind of interlocking into the substrate. So what will happen? We are going to drill the substrate in a way that the anchor will adapt to the opening itself in order to make that kind of interlock. So we are going to drill using, usually using a special type of drill bit to make a, this kind of conical shape so the anchor will adapt and go inside this exact opening. So this one and this mechanism, uh, it will give us less kind of stress, also a huge kind of load, but it will give us less kind of stress to the concrete. So it will be much better that we are not uh, exhausting the concrete, let's say. So this mechanical interlock, as we can see, this perpendicular to the anchor itself, it will represent our stress diagram. And finally, we are talking about the adhesive bonding. So in the adhesive bonding, that the load will be transferred to the adhesion of the, uh, the chemical anchor itself. So the adhesive bonding, it will be exclusively to the Fisher chemical anchor. It's good also to understand that this kind of fixation will create a minimal or even zero kind of stress into the concrete, because as you can see from that figure that there is no perpendicular uh, load or no perpendicular stresses. So that will help us in, in using 
smaller thicknesses of concrete and also smaller edge distance. So you can be more into the edge because you are not having that huge stress acting into the concrete. So in order to sum it up, we are having friction to the expansion. We are having a mechanical interlock where the anchor is going to be adapted inside and also the adhesive bonding, adhesive due to the chemical anchoring. So this is the work principles that I need you all, I need you all to understand because this is what we are going to face in the upcoming uh, slides. Okay. So this is the first parameter we, we say that we are going to talk about. The other one, it will be for sure the building material. And before going into that, can you tell me what are usually the building material you are facing in your construction site if you are working in a construction or what is the material that usually you are going to fix on or fix at usually in your the construction site, even at your, at your home, if you're going to do some do it DIY or do it yourself fixation. If you can give me this also, it will help us to bathe it into the right answer. So what is usually the building material you're having? So Mr. Ahmad Jalabi is saying clockwork, different types of clock, the hollow core and the concrete. This is right. Mostly people, Mr. Naveen and Mr. Uh, Roberto uh, also saying the, uh, the concrete as a majority, the RC reinforced concrete, Mr. Ayman, this is absolutely right. And some steel plates, usually this, the blades itself is the thing that we are going to fix on. Maybe there's some steel structure that you're going to fix your material on this is also valid. And Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Madavan is saying the hollow concrete or AAC, which is the aerated concrete. This is a very nice answer because this is becoming trendy now with the aerated or the autoclave concrete is becoming one of the material that is required to be installed usually for the villas. So thank you all for your answers. Basically, we are having three main types of building material, our concrete, our machinery, and our ports. On, on which of each we are going to discuss it specifically and more details in the coming slides. So basically, these are the main three, the concrete, the normal concrete we are facing outside, the machinery, it will have four, uh, four points or four categories. We are having the uh, concrete blocks with dense structure, like the solid brick or the solid block. We are having uh, uh, concrete blocks or solid blocks of uh, porous structure. This is, you can see it in the aerated concrete. This is the second type. The third type, you are going to have the uh, like the openings or the pore structure with uh, perforated openings that you can see it in the hollow block or the hollow, hollow block concrete. And also we're going to have a porous structure with compact uh, concrete. This is, we can also see it in the sand line brick. And for the gypsum or for the boards, we are going to have different materials we are going to discuss, whether the plaster board, the gypsum uh, fiber reinforced or the chip boards. So in order to go into details for that, we are going to discuss the following. We are going to discuss the normal concrete, which is our RC concrete, the hollow core pre-stressed concrete, which is a type of concrete. However, it's going to be pre-stressed, having a pre-stressed strand into the factory and having some elliptical shape of voids. And also we are going to have the solid block, which is the uh, some solid block of composed material of compacted material. We are going to have the aerated concrete, the AAC block or the AAC concrete. And we are going to discuss about the hollow block, which is our porous material of, of, uh, of opening structures. And we are going to discuss finally the board elements. So and on, for each, each of each, we are going to discuss what is the suitable anchor that we have to use and what is the main advantage and what are the main application for each. So we'll start with concrete. Basically, as you all know, it's a composite material of coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, cement paste, and water that it will get hardened over time. 
So what are the main properties of concrete? It will be basically having a huge level of compressive strength. However, it will be low in tensile strength. And in order to avoid that, usually you are going to have the reinforced concrete for the some sections that it will take the tensile or take the tension load. So usually what are the standard quant quality? Usually the quality, it will come in C, and then you mention two numbers, a number for the cubic test, and number for the cylindrical test. And basically these numbers, it will be into the megapascal, which is the uh, unit measurement for the uh, pressure force over the area. And usually we are going to start from C12, which is the minimum, minimum quality of the concrete. And then we are going to jump up to the higher level or higher grade of the concrete. But it's good to mention that mostly we are facing at site C30, 37, which is the mostly found for the most of the uh, concrete plant uh, fixation or concrete plant uh, factories. So usually for C12 2025, the number at the first, it will give us the compressive strength of the concrete cylindrical test and the 25, it will be the compressive strength of the concrete test of the cube. The cubical test that we already know from like from the laboratory, we have some dimension, we are going to test it. And then after 28 days of that hardening or setting, we will get some result which we are going to use in our construction site. So Fisher can provide many different solutions for the concrete fixation, whether it will be chemical, mechanical, uh, nylon fixation. However, I would like you all to concentrate on two main anchors that Fisher is really famous for, and it will give you the most tensile forces for your fixations. The first one is our main top mechanical expansion anchor that it will into category number one in the load mechanism. It will be Fisher Expansion Mechanical Anchor FAZ2. And please remember that name. It is the best anchor in the market as of now, according to the loads and to the certificates. And the other one for the mechanical anchor, which is to, according to the adhesive or the bonding strength, which is category number three. If you remember from the load mechanism uh, uh, chart, we are having Fisher chemical anchor. It's called FIS EM+. So these are the main two fixation we are going to use in the concrete anchoring fixation. And we are going through them one by one. So we will start firstly with our powerful mechanical expansion anchor FAZ2 that it's almost having all the approvals, whether the European approval or the American approval, also the seismic approval and the fire resistance that reach up to two hours in case of fires. So what are the main, main advantages that we look for the mechanical, our Fisher FAZ mechanical anchor? We will start firstly with our the range itself that it will come from M6 up to M24. And it's the first anchor in the market that it will come with M6. M6, it will be according to the diameter of the anchor itself, which is 6 mm. So it will start from 6 millimeters up to 24 millimeters in diameter. So it is the first in the market that it will give you M6. And it's also good to know that the M6 anchor, which is that small, it can give us a tensile load of 100 kilogram per fixation. You can imagine how huge is that for only M6 anchor. So the other main advantage we need to look for is that it has already a short version, which is called FAZ2K, that it will reduce the installation time and it will give also a reasonable and good, um, a good load uh, values. So for the third point that we need to discuss that it has an expand, expanded application field that the, the anchor itself, it took into another level that we can also start from the very, very minimal concrete strength from 1215 it has got that approval. It can work in that very minimal concrete it can reach up to the highest level concrete in the market. And it also be allowed to fix in the diamond drill hole, which is the only anchor that can do such thing, because usually the diamond drill will not be suitable for such kind of expansion anchor. Uh, it's really and good to know that the range of that anchor, it will be whether a zinc plated, 
for the indoor application and stainless steel for the application related to the outdoor or when it's uh, um, when it will be uh, having some uh, nearby some water or corrosion or some soil area we need to look for the stainless steel and the highly corrosion resistant steel for the area when there's aggressive kind of uh, uh, aggressive kind of uh, features where the, the, there is a huge kind of minerals in the soil itself and we are having huge rain heavy rains so we have to look for this uh, option for the installation of that anchor, Fisher had come up with a powerful sitting tool. So it's called FAST or FAST. And from its name, it can give you a fast serious anchor installation. And it will reduce the installation time and it will create no damage to the fixture. So basically you are going to place the anchor on that sitting tool and then you just use it into the drill and it will do the remaining. We will see in the upcoming slide, a small video, it will demonstrate how this sitting tool will make your life easy for fixing into the concrete for the mechanical anchors. So let's see together. Actually, the video has demonstrated that how it will be easier. It will like take almost like 20, 10, 15 seconds of the fixation that on a, in a serious installation that it will make it very easy for you, very fast for you to install. We have used it currently in many projects and it's giving a huge result and giving a really nice result. So we have discussed the first solution into the anchoring for the concrete, for the reinforced concrete, which is the mechanical solution. And then we have also to look into the chemical solution that's becoming a trendy now, and mostly it's using in the all and different types of applications. So for our chemical anchor, as we discussed, we are going to talk about FIS EM plus, Fisher Injection System Epoxy Mortar Plus. That is the best also in the market. And according to the figures and data, but let us go and understand firstly, why chemical anchor? Because people will ask like, why should I go for a chemical anchor? For example, if I'm having the mechanical anchor easier to install, uh, it will cover all of the applications. Like, can anybody guess why, why we sometimes need to use the chemical anchor? If you can give me that thing. So, So Mr. Ahmad is saying that chemical can carry more tension. This is somehow right. This is somehow right. Generally, the loads in chemical, it, it's usually taking more or less, uh, having more loads than, than the mechanical anchor. Mr. Naveen, he's saying the installation of rebars, and this is absolutely correct. The installation for the rebars and its extensions, you just cannot do it without an epoxy, which is very important. Mr. Barra is saying that the chemical anchor to be also for back concrete. Sometimes it will, uh, it will, it will take care of these maybe uh, fragile areas. It can, it can be also. And Mr. Bolson say that the edge distance may be reduced, and this is absolutely right. As we discussed, that the bond strength itself it will make no stress into the concrete. So we can reduce the edge distance. We can reduce also the concrete thickness. Mr. Ihab Rida is saying that usually depending on the substrate itself and what I'm going to attach to it. So this is also general, but it's correct. And some application requirements. Also, this is correct for the underwater application, let's say. So 
why we have to go for the concrete uh, fixation? This is basically related to the no stresses. As we mentioned, we are not creating any kind of strength stresses, and this is thanks to the bond strength of the adhesive itself. So this is no stresses to the concrete, high load capacity. We don't need more than this. Higher grade of steel can be used because most sometimes the mechanical anchor, it will come with a grade that's limited of 4.6, for example. Uh, however, for the uh, steel that can be used with the chemical anchor, you can use 6.8 and 8.8, and 6.8 and 8.8, basically it will be the yield strength of the, related to the yield strength of the steel itself, or the grade of steel itself. So higher st steel grades can be used in the chemical anchor, unlike the mechanical anchor where it's limited to some grade that it, usually it will not exceed. And it will enable for more torque loads, usually for the torque loads, the bonding strength and the characteristic bonding strength in the chemical can take it more than what we can see in the mechanical anchor. So generally for the torque loads and generally in the loads, mechanical anchor can take more loads than the uh, mechanical. It can be used in the similar, in the smaller base material thicknesses, as we said, since that there is no stresses in the concrete, we're not, we, we are not exhausting the concrete, so we can having smaller base thickness, smaller thicknesses and smaller edge distances, as you mentioned in your answers uh, in the chat. And also, other than the concrete that we are going to discuss, the chemical anchor itself can be used for the hollow flock. It can be used also for irrigated concrete. And since there is a higher grades of steel, also it will be a corrosion resistance since we are going to use different types of grades. So for the other solution of the concrete, other than the F is a mechanical anchor, we are looking for the chemical solution, which is FIS EM plus, as we mentioned. And for that chemical, we have a plenty and a lot of important factors that, that will let us choose this. So thanks to the service life of 120 years, the only chemical in the market can have this, this uh, surface life. You can imagine that a chemical can work more than the building itself. 100 years of service life, according to the European assessment, and 120 years, the only in the market, according to the expert reports, which is can give you and guarantee you the safety outside. You just place it and you don't care about it after all. And then we are looking for the large threaded rod diameters. We are reaching up to 30 mm in the studs and the only one or the only chemical in the market that can reach up to 40 mm. So you just can imagine how it will take the, uh, how can you, how can, how, how can you use this anchor up to different types of diameters? So into M30 for the broad diameters and up to M40 for the phi 40 for the three bars. What else we need, we need to look at. So this anchor or this chemical, the mechanical anchor or this chemical anchor, it will come with the approved for all seismic category, including C1 and C2, according to the European assessment. So also usually and in the project where the seismic, uh, seismic requirements is there, you can use this anchor very safely and without any problems. So, and what is really important that sometimes and according and let's say we are facing uh, a dense reinforcement in the structure in which we need to have a diamond drilling because we will face a lot of free bars in which the normal drilling will not work. So for the diamond drills and according to the surface where it's, it's a clear surface, let's say it's not roughened, usually we will tell you that it's not allowed to use any fixation, even the chemical. But thanks to the FIS EM Plus, you still can use it to the diamond drill hole, even in the cracked concrete without no need of any kind of roughening. So even though the surface is clear, even though the surface is not roughened in the diamond drill, you can still use it without any kind of roughening. It will make it easier for you outside, a fast process outside, and giving also huge amount of loads. And what is really important on that, this, is, this chemical can give you a resistance 
for up to to 40 minutes, which is four hours. You can imagine how huge is this, and you can imagine how it will also uh, uh, cover the fire requirements in case you will see it outside. Also, it's good to mention that this anchor comes with the European approval and the American approval, so it will suit all kind of specifications. So after we have discussed the main features and advantage for our chemical anchor, we have to look about what are the applications? What are the applications where we are using these anchors? Somebody will ask, yes, it has a lot of good features, but give me where we can use this anchor. So we will start firstly about the structural steel columns. We are having architectural or structural requirement at site, whether, for example, we have canopies, we are having shades, we are having some beam column fixation, and we are having some shades for barking, let's say. All of these, usually, we are going for to fix using our weather to the mechanical anchor to the concrete or the chemical anchor to the concrete, usually for the higher loads and for the smaller edge distances, we are going for the chemical FIS-EM plus fixation. The other fixation, it will be for the raised floor fixation, which is mostly you will find it in a lot of projects where you have to uh, extend a lot of cable trays and cables uh, uh, below the floor itself. So they were going to construct a kind of raised floor with some vertical and horizontal studs and then tiles will be placed. And there are many suppliers are, are famous for that. However, for this vertical member, you still need to fix it with a very reliable, reliable anchor that it will take all the impact loads, which, which people are moving, live loads, impact loads, dynamic loads. Usually we are looking for the F is it anchor that it will help us in, in, in that fixation. Going to the third application that the brackets coming for cladding and this cladding, whether into the bridges, let's say into the concrete walls, usually it will be fixed to some of the brackets as you can see it in the bottom left, where it will be some shapes. Uh, according to the stru structural design, structural steel design, it will have some loads, specifically for the wind load that it will be huge as long as with the vertical load, if the kind of cladding is, 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 is in a heavy weight. So this also has to be fixed to the concrete using a special kind of anchor. And you will not find any better solution that whether the FEZ or the FIS EM plus anchor. And finally, and the final also important solution, it will be for the elevator divider beams. So for the divider beams, and in order to fix the rails that is responsible of making the uh, elevator going up and down, so usually we are making something called divider beam. This divider beam usually is fixed inside the concrete shafts, or sometimes for the hollow block shafts. And then you have to fix this into the concrete with a reliable anchor. And as you can see here, our great Fisher channel is fixed for one of the rails that's going to be there, placed there, as you can see this bracket, which is the responsible for fixing the rails. But what you need to concentrate on, it will be that bracket in order to fix the, uh, uh, the divider beam itself, in order to take, in order to cover this kind of impact load, live load, and dead load for sure. This is, has to be chosen carefully, and you'll not find better than the FZ and the FSEM plus for the chemical and mechanical anchors to fix. So by this, we are finishing all the solutions related to the concrete anchors, and we have discussed the applications. Please let me know if, if in your mind have faced different kind of application and give it to me in the, in the chat, and also we can discuss it in the questions and uh, inquiries section. So after finishing the concrete anchors, we need to look for another important substrate, also related to the concrete, but it's not the reinforced concrete. It will be the hollow core pre-stress concrete. So usually it's the voided slab, a hollow core. Usually it's pre-stressed at the, at the factory. And usually they are using it in the large areas like malls and parkings that it will help into a fast process of construction. You just don't need to do kind of any cost of place anchors. You only need to just place it into the cor corbels or some kind of special fixation at site. 
However, we have to be careful there because usually the anchors, normal anchor we have discussed, mostly it will not work here because we are having the void. And since it's a special requirement, we have to have a special solution. And that special solution, it will be FHY. So it's hollow ceiling anchor fissure FHY that it will cover your needs in the case of the hollow core slabs. So somebody will ask, why, why can't I am using the expansion anchor, for example, uh, into like the FZ mechanical anchor that we discussed? Why we cannot use it here? If anybody can answer me, this, this also would be great. Like why we cannot use the normal mechanical anchor or even the chemical anchor for the hollow core slab. So basically I'm asking like why we cannot use the normal mechanical anchor in such uh, fixation. We are just waiting for your answers if you have any. So basically, basically what will happen, and as Mr. Muhammad say that the core will be damaged or cracked, this is, this, is, uh, this is good. Maybe there is no enough depth, which is, this is the right, this is, this is a simple yet the right answer for Mr. Agasti. We have to have a minimum depth for the mechanical anchor to work. And this minimum depth, usually it will be going ranging from 60, 80 mm, which you cannot just find it in the hollow core slab. The normal anchor will not be suitable for the hollow concrete, as, as you all said. So what will happen? Basically, we need a, such a type of anchor where it has to be looked into the opening because usually the hollow core slab, it will have a void and uh, the normal area, but it will be a full of strand where you just cannot easily fix. So where we are going to fix normally in the void area. And in the void area, we need a looking barbs. This looking barbs, it will be a special feature in our FHY. In order to fix it, it will not allow this anchor to drop out during the installation, however the load is. We are also having the special edge construction that it will not, it will only have a limit for the, uh, for the, for the, for the bolt itself not to go deeper than, and it is also available in diameter M12. It will start from M6 into M12. It will cover all the needs at you at site. So, a very simple answer that we have to have some limited anchorage depth for the normal mechanical anchor to use where we cannot find it here. So we have to use our special anchor FHY. So basically you are going to drill into the hollow and then the looking barbs, it will not, it will allow, it will not allow the anchor itself to drop down use the installation. So as you can see, this is this is a kind of rendering representation of the anchor itself. The looking barbs, it will catch into the web area. So you can fix your MEB supports very easily. So for the hollow core, you cannot find better solution than the FHY to cover all your needs. So what are the main applications for the hollow core anchoring? Basically, we are looking for all MEB surfaces for the firefighting, chilled water pipes, drainage pipes and also the electrical services as we can see in the pictures mostly also they are using the hollow core anchor in the grid of the secondary steel itself so we are going we are having some channels and we are having some grids in which we need to fix the vertical member of it into the ceiling so we also need to have our fhy anchor to fix on it and Finally, we are going to have different types of mechanical units like FCU unit or the FCU fans where we have to fix it using our FHY anchor. So by this, we are finishing all the applications related to the whether the con normal concrete or the hollow core pre-stressed concrete. Then we are going to the blocks, the solid blocks and the hollow blocks. 
Usually the concrete blocks, as we have mentioned, made of cast concrete like the Portland cement aggregate and sand, fine gravel for the high density blocks. However, for the low density blocks, like the hollow block or uh, different types, we, they have sometimes to include like some industrial waste, like the fly ash or some, some admixtures that it will uh, it will be represented as a waste. But for the, whole, for the solid block, it's basically a solid brick made of dense structure. So it, which is a highly compressive resistant, a building material without any kind of cavities, but the hollow block, it will be a perforated with a kind of dense or compact structure. So it's perforated, it will not be felt completely. It will having some perforation due to the uh, ease of installation at site and in order to reduce the weight. Most probably these will not be non-structural uh, walls made of hollow block. So usually it will be made for uh, some partitioning inside the building itself. So we are having the solid block, which is solid bricks with condensed or dense structure. And we are having the hollow block. It's a perforated bricks also with a compact structure. So for the solid block and the hollow block, we have to look for the suitable solutions. We will start firstly about the solid block. Fisher also have a different range of uh, solution for the solid block, but we need to look for that special, very special anchor, which called our versatile, versatile SXRL anchor. So for the solid block, we are looking for the SXRL as we're going to see. So we are calling this a versatile since this anchor will not only be suitable for the solid block, it will be suitable for different kind of substrate, including anchors, hollow core anchor or hollow block anchor, sorry, and also the aerated concrete. We are choosing this anchor specifically because it will be suitable for all building material. We are going to know this in the upcoming slide. So what will make this anchor special in the, in the fixation of the solid block? Firstly, it is uh, done according to the nylon quality. And the nylon quality, it will be done from very special polymers, uh, which will be a UV resistance, and it will not deteriorate uh, during the time. Uh, unlike the different plastic that you can see at the normal market, that it will not be a UV resistance, it will break very easily, and it will not take the load after some time. So it's basically be, uh, it will allow us to fix uh, during different types of material as we are going to see. And thanks, thanks to the, uh, our rim here that it will also allow us to fix in different types of material depths. We are looking also for the rips of, of the anchor as we can see it. And these rips will not allow the anchor itself to rotate. So it will be fixed into the material. We are also looking about a special geometry of the anchor itself that it will be optimized and distribute the load very uniformly. And we are naming this to be a versatile because the long expansion part and it's XRL, it, it, the L here, it will uh, relate to the long expansion. So we are using, why are you using this long expansion part? Because it will suit us for different materials, as we can see here in, in that. We are, we, we can, we, we will be, we will be able to use it in different types of material according to depth or the anchorage depth. For example, in the concrete, 50 mm inside the concrete will be enough. In the different building material, which we are discussing now, which is the solid block and the hollow block, also it can be used up to 70 mm and the aerated concrete will increase a, bit, um, a little bit more in order to get the required load. It will be uh, 90 mm. So this anchor not only be suitable for the solid bricks, it will be also for the concrete, for the aerated concrete and the hollow anchor itself. Also, not to emphasize more about the nylon, Fisher nylon quality, it's not a normal plastic, it's a UV resistance, and it will not deteriorate uh, uh, along the time. But let us see that video that it will tell us how this anchor is going to be fixed in the solid, solid and hollow block. Let's see that video together and see how to be installed.
after we have seen this, how it will be installed at the different, uh, different types of material, we are going also to look for the best solution for the hollow block. It will be the other chemical of PIS B+. It will be related to the vinyl ester types of chemical. It will be suitable for the hollow block, as we can see in the pictures, that it will get attached into the ribs of the hollow block itself, thanks to the sleeve, whether it's plastic or uh, cloth. So for the FIS B+, it's our another chemical, very versatile also for the concrete and the block, it has got the approval of 100 year service life. Also the, the characteristic uh, bond strength has been uh, increased with the seismic application for the category C1 and C2. And also, and more importantly, that it will be approved for the water filled boreholes and it will give us the uh, vers versatile for the reduced spacing and edge distance as we have discussed for the chemical anchor itself because of the reduced uh, stress. So this is will cover for the related fixations into the hollow block and the solid block. What are the main applications we need to look for? It will be basically the cladding support, you, whether using bin system or using the grid system. We, in order to fix on the hollow block, we will use the special anchor, whether the chemical anchor of FISB plus or the mechanical anchor or the nylon anchor of SXRL. Sometimes in the uh, construction site, we having a wall tie in order to fix the wall itself, in order to cover the seismic requirements into the concrete wall, we have to use our, whether the SXRL or the FISB plus anchor itself. And finally, we have to fix the curtain wall components, whether the transium or the million, usually it will come into the concrete or even sometimes on the hollow block walls. So we have to fix it using whether the chemical anchor of the uh, PSV plus or the SXRL. And then we are jumping to a very important type of material, which is the aerated concrete. The autoclave aerated concrete is basically a lightweight concrete in order to uh, having kind of cladding. Uh, it's really special into having kind of uh, saving energy because it, it, this type of material will not allow the energy to go out. So usually it's a, now a requirement in the main villas that it has to be used in order to uh, cover all the uh, uh, like LEED and the, uh, and the uh, energy requirements. So basically for the aerated concrete, we have two types, whether the nylon solution is the aerated anchor JB and the air crate anchor FPX. So we're having a plastic type or not plastic, a nylon type and the steel type. Usually what's the difference between them? It will be according to the requirements. So sometimes if there's a fire resistant requirement, we have to go for the air crate anchor FPX in order to uh, fulfill the requirements. So what are the main applications for that? It will be basically the cladding support and the piping support in the riser or wall application related to the autoclave or the aerated concrete. We have to use these anchors, whether the plastic one or the uh, steel one. Finally, we are going to the board elements. Basically the board elements, it will be inside the residential and commercial buildings. We are using it to make some partitioning inside. It will be uniform, it will be fire resistant. However, it, we have to take care that it's non-structural elements and it's also have special fixed elements that has to be used. Finally, we are looking for the dew bower itself, which it will be one of the great nylon fixation, nylon solution for the board element, whether it's one layer or double layer. We are having the central tips that it will allow us easily to go inside the concrete or inside the uh, uh, gypsum elements. We are having anti-rotation locks that it will allow us to uh, having easy installation on site. So let's see the new tech installation, how it will be to conclude our webinar on.
So in order to have any fixation for the bold, bold elements, as we have said for the Dutech or du Bauer, uh, very powerful in installation um, um, anchors at the board elements. But usually what we are fixing on the board elements would be the curtain rails in the, uh, in the uh, gypsum si single or double uh, gypsum fiberboard areas. And the secondary grid ceiling for the, uh, for the support silk for the, for the secondary ceiling, usually they would require some grid that it would be fixed in, in the corridors of the project and usually these corridors it will have some gypsum board in order to fix it into into the ceiling so we have to use some uh, special utec or u power anchoring for the secondary ceiling finally we are looking for the wall cabinets or even the wall consoles some of the small uh, um, um, application small application or small uh, small fixations into these since they are not a non uh, bearing loads uh, however, the anchor itself will be able to take that required load and even more. Thank you for attending our webinar covering all the different fixation on different substrates. I will be more than happy for you to fill this poll and I'll be answering all uh, your questions also uh, now. So please, for that general bowl that will show you in front of you right now, please fill it. And also I'll be answering the question now while you are filling the general bowl. It's a kind of feedback that we would like to have it from your side. So Mr. Mohammed uh, Omar Aziz, he is asking us for uh, the description of the cracked and non-cracked concrete phenomena related to the anchoring itself. So in a very simple way, usually and not all not all the or not all of the type of the expansion anchor will be suitable in all the areas. Usually in the field of the anchoring itself, we are classif classifying the concrete to be cracked and non-cracked, not according to the formulas we have got in that uh, concrete uh, uh, class at university, but it will be related to the area where we are expecting to have any kind of tensile loads. And any tensile, usually of, of the rebars are there, usually we call this to be a crack. However, in the areas, it will not have any kind of tensile loads, when it will not have any kind of tension, usually we are called this non-cracked. But who will determine this basically? It will be related to the designer itself. It's something that is very hard to determine because even for the slabs, if you, if you can say that sometimes people will say it will be all non-cracked, it's all a, a compression zone, but even though so that some areas and according to the whole structure itself, it will have some cracked. But what's good to know and what's good to understand is that for the anchor that we already described in the seminar itself, it's called FAZ. It will be suitable for all cracked and non-cracked uh, applications. So usually most of the concrete anchors the fisher is providing, it will be suitable for both, but some of the small anchors that it will be only suitable for non cracked application. So Mr. Andy is asking us about the BDF presentation. I'll be sending, I'll be sending this to you for sure. And uh, please, while I'm, I'm just uh, uh, answering the question, if you can fill the general poll as a feedback, I appreciate this so much. So Mr. Ernest, he's saying for the mechanical anchor for the FIS EM plus, if you can give us the best way uh, of using it without getting, without getting norsal dry fast and without changing many norsals, uh, basically we can give, we can help by uh, usually for any kind of fixation, we are going to give how many number of scales you, it's required. And this is, will be basically according to the uh, mortar fix software. A small software you can download it from your mobile. It will tell you exactly how many scales. So you will just not waste many time in order to just determine how many or like did I fill the hole completely or not. It will give you the scales which is on the on the cartridge itself and 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 which is a good feature by the way. So you just can use it and then uh, without it, with that and then you can use the nozzle uh, like many times before it before the chemical itself get, get dry inside.
So Mr. Ahmed Yalabi is, is asking about how we can get the limits, how we can get the limits of torque of each anchor and does it export it with the calculation report? For sure, it will be exported with the calculation sheet. This is, you can get it from two either ways. From the calculation report itself, it will be uh, included in the installation data at the last page. This is one. The second one, on the technical data sheet of the anchor itself, for each of the diameters, he will mention to you how is the, what is the torque in Newton meter that you can use without exceeding the limit and without making the anchor having some problem or something. So Mr. Ayman, he's saying the common challenge I face is always is the shear breakout failure for high shear in case of small edges. Do chemical bolts can carry that shear force? Yeah, for sure, for sure it can take that force. However, we have to uh, respect some of the edge uh, values that you, you will be easily find it in the data sheet of the chemical anchor itself. He will tell you how, what is the edge distance required for that chemical before having any kind of shear failure. So this is, can be easily uh, avoided by giving you these values. So sometimes I'll tell you, please stay away four centimeter uh, away from the, uh, from, from the edge of the concrete, and then it can be easily uh, solved. So Mr. Naveen John is asking about what is the curing time for the Fisher epoxy mortar? Uh, uh, usually the epoxy mortar curing time, it will be affected by the temperature. Uh, so more specifically the working temperature or the area where you are applying the chemical anchor itself. Uh, so um, so uh, usually um, as a minimum, and also we need to understand for there's a kind of difference between the gelling and curing time. We are having gelling time in which the time that you will be allowed to adjust your threaded or you adjust your repart. The curing time usually it will be uh, starting from uh, I think uh, um, uh, um, 20 hours, but with the more of the temperature we are having, the less the curing time we are going to have. So usually the minimum the minimum curing time we can have it is six hours, but the temperature when it's less, for example, it's a forty degree, we uh, up to up to thirty degree and more, it's six hours. But if the if the degree Celsius is uh, for example uh, twenty or something like that, it will take more. It will take like ten hours, fifteen hours. Mr. Muhammad is saying if you can share the video record of this webinar for sure, it will be uh, available on YouTube. And uh, we can also uh, give you this, and uh, it will be available to you. Let's have two or three more questions. And then for the remaining questions, I'll be answering this uh, through the uh, email to you, because we have already got your emails. And then uh, we can, we'll be more than happy giving you this answer on your email. So Mr. Baraj is saying that for the chemical anchor, are the chemical anchors waterproof? So uh, uh, like uh, um, what is what is a very uh, good features for the Fisher injection more than epoxy? Uh, FSEM is more, FSEM is more specifically is that it can, it's approved to be used underwater and also for the drinking water because it's, a, it's free of all these um, uh, material that will affect the drinking water. So yes, it's approved for the water filled holes. And more importantly, if the, if the anchor is fully underwater, you can, is, uh, you can easily use it. We are talking about some uh, fixation under the tanks or uh, for the, uh, the state cases for the water tanks itself, where it will be uh, always uh, covered uh, underwater. So it's, uh, it's completely approved to be used for the water filled areas and the underwater. And more, more and more, it will be for the drinking water. 
Mr. Muhammad is saying for the certificates, it will be uh, issued and there's certificates that it will be issued to you and it will be sent to you through the email as long as you attended the uh, more than 70% of the uh, webinar. Mr. I will I will uh, I will uh, uh, have this final question. Uh, I'm sorry for getting you um, uh, more than the time limit. So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Gu saying that uh, is the picture FXA anchor is available in the experience software. Yes, it's available in the experience software. And for the people who don't know that FXA is also an, a type of the any expansion anchor, uh, what that is currently and widely used for different applications. Yes, it is used for the experience uh, and it's available in the experience software. By this, I will be also uh, um, answering all the questions. Uh, through that email, uh, I would like to thank you all for attending and uh, and appreciate that you are staying with me even after the time. Thank you so much. And uh, and also uh, certificates will be issued for the uh, attendees who are attending more than seventy percent. And uh, appreciate your attend. And this was Mohammed Bakr from KSA Fisher team for the. Uh, uh, basics principle of anchors and thank you and see you soon uh, uh, in an upcoming webinar so thank you all